Member for Carleton. On the subject of ministers receiving valuable and improper gifts, the Liberal Vice Chair of the Ethics Committee and Liberal member of the Prime Minister's caucus said, and I quote, I do think repayment of the reasonable value of an improper gift that one receives is prudent and reasonable oh. for the Act. Does the Prime Minister agree with the Liberal Vice Chair of the Ethics Committee that ministers should return the commercial value of any improper gift they receive? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, immediately after the Ethics Commissioner released her report, I accepted the findings of the report, took responsibility, and I'm following up on every single element of her advice or recommendation. That's what Canadians expect, and that following of the Ethics Commissioner's advice and recommendations is exactly what Canadians expect of any of us. Order. Do members not uh, think that Canadians have the capacity to judge the quality of questions and answers? I think they recognize that that's the case. I think members know that Canadians, the public, has the capacity to do that. They don't need assistance in this chamber. So, member for Carleton. Well, I'm glad the Prime Minister mentioned the Ethics Commissioner because his Vice Chair asked the Ethics Commissioner um, if he agreed that a minister should return any improperly received gifts, and the Commissioner said, of course it would be. Does the Prime Minister agree with the Ethics Commissioner on that? Honourable Prime Minister. What's interesting, Mr. Speaker, is we have the best economic growth numbers uh, in, ten, in uh, ten years, uh, the lowest rate of unemployment in 40 years, uh, the fastest growth rate in the G7, and the members opposite spend their time slinging mud, making personal attacks, trying to stir up stories uh, that have already been dealt with. I took responsibility. I accept the full recommendations and advice of the Ethics Commissioner, uh, and they uh, I don't have anything else to criticize us on, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Carleton. Mr. Speaker, we're just trying to help Liberal Cabinet Ministers understand what the rules are. Uh, and so that's why I'm asking the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister's Cabinet is here and they're listening. He has an opportunity to inform them. If a minister, for example, got a $200,000 gift from someone who was lobbying that minister, would the Prime Minister take action? What, what action would he take? Would he fire the minister? Would he force them to give the gift back? Would he refer the matter to the RCMP or just shrug? <laughs> the right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, as has been the case for previous Prime Ministers and as the former Commissioner herself stated, security costs are incurred whenever and wherever the Prime Minister travels. Right. Moving forward, of course, I'm happy to follow all the advice and recommendations that the Commissioner had to make, including uh, surrounding personal and private travel. Honourable Member for Carleton. Mr. Speaker, I'm not talking about the cost mm -hmm. of the transportation and security. I'm talking right. about the commercial value of a gift. I never actually mentioned the Prime Minister, by the way. I just described some conduct, and he immediately, <laughs> he immediately attributed it to himself. But it's funny. Uh, an island like the one on which he vacationed, they're advertised for, and they cost a lot of money, Mr. Speaker, uh, approximately $200,000 for the amount of time and the number of people the Prime Minister had a vacationing as part of this gift. Does he believe that a minister, any minister, should rape, repay an improper gift of that size? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Canadians watching question period could be alarmed at the tone and the attacks that come back and forth in this place, but they should be reassured that above the partisanship, above the mudslinging, we have an ethics commissioner who looks into allegations, that looks into behaviours, and makes determinations on what happened and what needs to happen going forward. And I actually am pleased that the ethics commissioner uh, made clarifications, uh, significantly put forward recommendations. Uh, I accepted responsibility and have endeavoured and will commit to following all the recommendations of the ethics commissioner. The Honourable Member for Carleton. Section 121.1c of the Criminal Code says, and I quote, uh, is, sorry, it, it says it is an offence for a government official to, quote, accept from, from a person who has dealings with the government a commission, reward, advantage, or benefit of any kind 
for themselves or another person. Mm -hmm. If the Prime Minister learned that one of his ministers had accepted a benefit from someone who had dealings with the government, what would he do about it? Hey, Honourable Prime Minister. Canadians understand and appreciate that the function of an opposition in this parliamentary system is to ask tough questions and challenge the government. What is important to know, however, is we have a system that goes above the partisan attacks and the personal mudslinging right. and actually charges the Ethics Commissioner with looking into issues and allegations of this, making findings of fact and making determinations on the path forward. I have fully accepted all the findings, all the advice, all the recommendations by the Ethics Commissioner. Thank her for her work and we'll keep going. Honourable Member for Carleton. Mr. Speaker, once again, I merely quoted sections out of the Criminal Code without referring to the Prime Minister. He instantaneously assumed that I was making a personal attack against him. This is a Prime Minister who accepted a gift that's worth approximately $200,000 from someone who is seeking a $15 million grant from the Government of Canada. Does he dispute these facts? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the issue we've run into with this particular member opposite before is uh, he was able to say things in the House of Commons uh, out from under parliamentary immunity that he would no longer repeat outside. Uh, and the fact is that we have a ethics commissioner whose job is to look at the facts, to determine what is public, what is private, what is uh, responsible, what is not, what is personal attacks, what is not. And I accepted responsibility, accept the full findings and recommendations of the ethics commissioner, and that's what reassures Canadians. Section 121.1c of the Criminal Code makes it an offence for a government official to, quote, accept from a person who has dealings with the government a commission, reward, advantage, or benefit of any kind for themselves or another person. Was the Prime Minister aware of this section of the Criminal Code when he accepted a $200,000 gift from a person who has dealings with his government? Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, again, above the mudslinging, we have an Ethics and Conflict of Interest Commissioner who is tasked with looking into the facts of issues uh, and making recommendations uh, and holding parliamentarians, all parliamentarians, to account. When the Commissioner put forward her report, I fully accepted that res report, took responsibility, and have uh, been implementing the advice and recommendations she made from it. The Opposition may continue to want to uh, sling mud and make personal attacks, but Canadians can be reassured that the Ethics Commissioner is doing her job, has done her job. The Honourable Member for Carleton. But her job does not include investigating matters under the Criminal Code. There are two parts to, there are two essential elements to Section 121C of the Criminal Code. A government official accepting a benefit, one, from a person who has dealings with the government, two, did the Prime Minister accept a benefit from the Aga Khan? Does the Aga Khan have be dealings with the government? Simple. Right on with the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, these are all questions that the Ethics Commissioner dug into in her report and made clear recommendations on. What's clear, however, is that on this side of the House, we value and respect the work done by office officers of Parliament. On that side of the House, they continue to, to question the work of the Ethics Commissioner, just like they did, Mr. Speaker, for 10 years of insulting, minimizing, discarding the advice of officers of Parliament. That's what they did when they were in government. We take a different approach. We respect the great work done by our officers of Parliament. Well, member for Carleton. Well, it's not the Ethics Commissioner that's responsible for investigating matters uh, under the Criminal Code, Mr. Speaker. The RCMP is responsible for that. Did the Prime Minister or his office ever discuss his island vacation with any member of the RCMP? Right on with the Prime Minister.
Mr. Speaker, again, the Ethics Commissioner did a complete and thorough investigation at the request of members opposite. I cooperated with the Ethics Commissioner on every step of the way, and her report uh, is fulsome uh, and, uh, and uh, rigorous. Uh, if they choose to question the work that she's done, the quality of work that the former Ethics Commissioner did, well, that's their prerogative. And quite frankly, it's consistent with the approach uh, that the Conservative government under Stephen Harper always had which is minimize, discard, uh, and ignore the great work done by officers of Parliament. Right. A member for Carleton. Mr. Speaker, I want to be clear. On behalf of the opposition, we fully endorse the Ethics Commissioner's finding of guilt for this crime. He broke, he broke four sections of the, ex, uh, the ethics law, and now he wants to turn himself into the victim because the opposition is asking legitimate questions about Section 121 of the Criminal Code. Does he dispute that he accepted thousands of dollars of benefits from somebody who had official dealings with his government and with him personally? In this place, we have a system where uh, different parties uh, ask questions and hold governments to account, and it works very well. But what also works very well is Canadians can be reassured that above uh, the mudslinging and personal attacks, we have officers of parliament like the Conflict of Interest and Ethics Commissioner who will dig into the actual facts of the matter, make thorough investigations. We worked with the Ethics Commissioner throughout the fall and can say we fully accept all her findings and have moved forward on accepting all her recommendations.